Hey, I got some news, guys. I'm gonna be on a podcast tomorrow. I'm gonna announce this in this video. At some point, I'm gonna announce what podcast this is and what YouTube channel it's gonna be on. So make sure you stay tuned throughout the whole video. Don't be like clicking through and all that stuff because you might miss out and find out where, I, where I'm gonna be at. Hey, okay? you wanna know what podcast I'm gonna be on, right? Obviously. Train the muscles, not the joints. Welcome back to Natural Galant Bodybuilding, Mountain. And today I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about mastery of the forces. You're kind of like a natural bodybuilding Jedi after you've been doing this for a while, right? Most of you guys are. I mean, you've been doing this for a bit, I'm sure, if you're watching this channel and you're open-minded enough to listen to what I have to say, most likely you've been at this game for a while, most of you. Some of you are just really wise beginners, but for the most part I find uh, some experiments in life need to be experienced first before understanding is possible. Let's put it that way. Sometimes when you're a bird and you hit a window, you realize that there's such thing as walls that are see-through. Wow, right? So what I want to say today is there is something that is a very misunderstood concept among natural bodybuilders and bodybuilders in general when they're starting off for the first probably decade, honestly. Uh, it, sometimes for a whole decade, uh, this BS continues until somebody finally wakes up. So that said, first we have to start with understanding that exercises are made up things. Let's just wrap your mind around that for a second. Exercises are all made up. Let's just push forward, we'll call that a press. Let's curl the arms, let's call that a curl when we bend the elbow, right? And based on the group or collective agreement, We've decided what exercises are this or that, but, but just because this is a great starting point, it doesn't mean these exercises are perfectly catered to your situation. Some of the exercises are not. Like we've talked about lots of times, some exercises will destroy you because they're not working in alignment with your body. So that said, let's take the wisdom a little further. And this is where most natural bodybuilders or a lot of them that I competed against uh, used to get tortured on stage because they would do everything correctly. They would do the exercise correctly and Barring genetics, you know, because we all have our own individual genetics But a lot of times I'd watch what these guys do when they train their legs or train their chest or train their back And they would do everything picture perfect, but they weren't mastering the concentration of the forces on the area they wanted to hit they were just doing something because it looked like all the other guys in the magazine, the way they were doing it, and that meant that was supposed to be the perfect exercise. But then when you go up to them and say, hey, where do you feel this? They're like, oh, I feel it generally over here, or I feel the exercise in my anus, right? But they're not necessarily feeling it where they want to feel it. You see what I'm saying? So I know I'm exaggerating a little bit here because you know all exercises have their purpose, but at the same time, I get trolled all the time because I am a master of how the forces are working in my own individual system and I'm consistently dredging deeper into that mastery. I'm saying how do I perfect this or even get more honed in where I can really concentrate the forces on the muscle fibers I wanna hit so that way I get results. Even though I'm an old dude now, I'm not as young as I used to be, so the body's not quite the same, right? But in the end, this is what this whole journey is about. It's about mastering the physical forces of nature. It's like physics on the body. How does it all play out with your individual collection of lever arms and fulcrums and all that sort of engineering stuff, right? <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not an engineer, but I could tell you right now that I can feel very strongly where forces are acting in any one exercise. I can feel it very strongly and I can tell you when they're just 
in a general area or in a very specific area. So why is this important? Well, this is important because at some point you're gonna see that your body develops a certain way and there's going to be certain weak links or certain things that pop up where you're like, hey, I'd like to, I'd like to be able to isolate an area to basically bring more muscle mass there or bring more balance. Maybe you've got an injury and you can tell that some of the muscles that are responsible for stabilizing the area or assisting with that are weak and you want to isolate those. So in the end, this is going to influence your exercise technique. It's going to influence your range of motion. It's going to influence the angle of attack, all of these things. So when I train and I do shoulder presses, I put up some footage of me shoulder pressing and I'm coming down to my chin with the bar and I'm coming up to here and then down. Now my arms are almost, almost straight, right? They're almost straight. But somebody out there thinks, the purist out there thinks that you have to straighten the arms and lock and bring the bar back in order for it to be an effective exercise. Now, as soon as somebody makes a comment like that, I know they're a beginner or they're extremely ignorant and that's why usually their profile picture shows no results. It's because they are assuming that the play of forces don't matter. All that matters is if you do the exercise according to what's written in a textbook somewhere. So when I'm concentrating the forces on the front delt and keeping tension there, and when I notice that at some point when I come up that the forces transfer more to the neck, and it doesn't add any more burn or any more pumpy and lumpy feeling to the delt, I don't feel any more pulling in the muscle in here, what I have to say is what is stopping me from doing more repetitions? What's stopping the set? And if it's more trap and neck issues, possibly a tweak or something, that cannot be the right thing, especially if it injures me. But secondly, if I want to concentrate the forces on the delt themselves in order to grow the delt, it makes sense that you want the delt to hit failure. I want to concentrate all the exercise forces on the delt. So this is when you start to act strategically when you're in the gym and you start to really concentrate those forces in order to get a certain effect, a certain result. That's why you're in the gym, is to create a result, right? It's not just to randomly do a bunch of stuff and whatever happens, happens, right? You're trying to find out how do you concentrate the forces on these areas that are not developing or the areas that you wish to develop. And the most important part of this is being aware enough of knowing when some ranges of motion or some movements start to injure you or tweak something in a certain way. We all know the bodybuilders, they walk around like this, they can't turn their neck because they tweaked it in the gym from doing something silly, right? That happens. So you have to become conscious of this. So don't get so married to some technique you see on the internet. I mean, I'm not saying it's not a good place to start, but if your body's telling you something, well then you obviously have to change some part of how you're training or what you're doing. And, and that's really what I have to say about that. So this is also the same reason why I don't touch my chest when I'm doing chest training. Uh, I can touch my chest with lighter poundages and even heavier poundages I can, but I find after a certain point of the stretch, I start to hit way more delt because of my dislocating shoulder injury. And also I find that the tendons in the pecs are more susceptible to injury in that range of motion. So although I will warm up or stretch with that range of motion from time to time, when I'm using maximal poundages or higher amounts of weight, I will be more conservative in order to make sure that I've got a backup plan to make sure I'm not tearing a pec or pulling something weird, right? So that's why I do that. But I do want to concentrate the forces on the belly of the pecs, but I don't want to concentrate the forces on the tendon insertion. Right? We know a lot of people who have done that, and then what happens? Snapola, right? So this is why you have to become conscious. And this is a thing that most natural bodybuilders and a lot of people I met on stage, in the beginning five to 10 years, a lot of them still did not get it. They were just bouncing up and down on the joints all day long and not necessarily concentrating the forces on the muscles. That's what I have to say about that. Stop trolling me because I'm wiser than you, at least to the trolls anyway. Pow, boom. I have to give these guys a couple like uppercuts. Huh? I'll give them a ride in my bicycle, in a basket, all the way down the hill. That'll teach them. So thanks for watching the video. And I have some news for you. Monday at 11 a.m. Eastern time, I am going to be on the Massive Iron Podcast with Steve Shaw. So if you wanna check that out, check out his YouTube channel called Massive Iron and the podcast will be on there or you can check out Spotify or the other areas where podcasts are. Make sure you check that out 
And yeah, we had a great conversation and I think you guys will get a lot of it and uh, enjoy it, of course, because that's the most important thing. Like what else are you gonna watch for? You, you obviously gotta enjoy it somehow. Mount. So thanks a lot for watching. If you need to get a hold of me, just go to naturalgalandbodybuilding.com and thanks to the Patreon supporters and take care for now.